content. Um, uh, now, it, see, what we, again, we always mix up what, how God's thinking. See, God loves you, okay? Relax in that. But if you, if you were to say to him, Lord, are you satisfied where I am? He would say, well, Dave, there's a bit more work to be done there. There's more to be done. <clears throat> and he's not content with where you are. Bless the Lord. He wants more to be done. And that great question, that is the first question we looked at it the other day, where are you? Is the great question of, um, uh, to challenge our location, our condition, our growth. See, it's not just to say where, of course, the, the, the context uh, we know is Adam and Eve had sinned and they were hiding and God was seeking and God always does. Uh, the initiative is never ours. It's always his. He's searching. He's looking. But, of course, that question is not just personal and particular for Adam and Eve. It's particular for you and me. Because God is always asking, where are we in relation to our salvation, of course, if we're not saved? But he's also asking that question in our relation to our relationship, our intimacy, our walk with him, our progression. When Josh comes, he'll put my uh, uh, points up. And uh, so God's question, where are you? And the wonderful thing is this. Listen to this. This is a distinction between this. <clears throat> we do not work for anything from God. Listen to that now. We do not work for it, but we have to work out that which God has given us. Why do we not work for? Because we're already children, aren't we? We're already children of God. I, my inheritance is secure. I'm a child of God. Bless the, the cattle on a thousand hills is his, and he's mine. I'm his father. That's why he said, why are you worrying? Why are you fretful in, in, in uh, uh, Matthew 5, 6, 7? Why are you fretful? I'm your father. Don't worry. I'm your father. But to position ourselves, that's what we're looking at this morning, positioning ourselves in such a place where God is bringing us closer to him, where we are walking closer, hand in hand, where we are becoming, our progression is obvious. And as we heard last week from Nick, um, we are prone to coast, aren't we? It's a good one, coast. And we are, because we love just putting our feet up. Now, you can put your feet up and, and rest in the Lord, but you know what I mean. Put your feet up and, and actually do nothing of, of use in the kingdom of God. Or like Martha, or like Martha, get so uh, busy, get so busy, oh, sorry, so busy, so busy, you actually do nothing for the Lord. You get caught up um, in things that we um, shouldn't be caught up in, fretting about things that have no eternal value. That's important. So this morning, um, where are you? Where are you? Where are you in your position? Where are you, first of all, in your preparation? Your preparation. The wonderful thing about uh, God, he's always doing a work. He's always preparing us for something else. God is not finished with you. There's a process going on in your life. You can either work with God or you can work against him. You can either, you see, you, you, can, you can either get into heaven, good, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's have a look at what you did for me. You walked in, in, in my plans. You, you progressed. You, you allowed me to do a process in your life. You came to the end, good and faithful. Or you can get to heaven. You'll be in heaven. But he said, let's have a little look. And when passed through the fire, it's all gone. Why? Because you resisted God's work in your life. You didn't you walk according to God's plan and God's purpose and God's word. And allowed God's word, as, as uh, uh, Amy Carmichael said, allowed God's word to actually hurt us sometimes. God's word does. Because by even by our old natures, always drifting this way, always looking at the world, always looking at our circumstances, always looking not at the Lord, but at this and that and t'other. We get caught up in that. Where are we? Where are you? The wonderful thing is God loves pre pre a preparation. He loves a process. Now, of course, um, we don't like process. Um, we resist it, we run away from it, we short-circuit it, uh, but God will not rush for you nor for me. No. So that's why 
when he said to Abram, you'll be a father of many nations. Oh, Abram was thinking, fantastic. Well, you better hurry up. I'm 75 now, he said. And he gave him 20, another 25 years. Because there was a process. There was the promise. There was a fulfillment. But there was a big process in between. Moses. Yes, we know Moses. Going to use you, Moses. Oh, bless the Lord. 40 years of age, of course. He, as we said before, he was at his peak. He was a great military man. The history tells us. Josephus tells us he was a great military man. He was a great man. He was a great man of speech. Don't believe he was, a, he was not telling the truth uh, when he took the Lord because uh, Stephen said he was a great man of, of word as well. And uh, so he wasn't a, a, anything but that process of from 40 to 80, 80 years of age, I've, time's gone. But the process came now. And that's why the Bible says of Moses, he was the meekest man on the face of the earth because God had got him through the process. You see, the greater the... The, the ministry, in a sense, or the greater the calling of God, the, 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 the longer and the deeper the process has got to be, isn't it? Because he knows that me and you are prone to pride. Dear me. That is our greatest, the greatest weapon, one of the greatest weapons the devil has, isn't he? That we look at ourselves, ah, pretty good, pretty good. No. So position, preparation, and we see right through the way. We go back to the Levites. They didn't just turn up, did they? Oh, no. And you begin to read Leviticus and Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers. You think, do you mean this is hard work? Remember, God is t teaching us. Remember, God's words are always for teaching. There's a process, there's a preparation to be used of God. See, we, we, want, we want to be used in all these gifts of the Spirit, but I was reading uh, Amy Carmichael. She said, we want the apostolic uh, gifts, he said, but we won't live the apostolic lifestyle. I thought, that's a good truth. <laughs> that's a truth in itself. Uh, we want these, but there's a process. Why? Because when our kids were small, and when they said, can I have a sword? Josh, can I have a sword? Can I have a hammer? I wish I taught him a bit more now. I, yeah, have it. Go on, have it. Well, you would have said, no. You can't, you can't manage that. You're not old enough. You're not mature enough. You'll cause some damage. More damage than your father is when he's trying to do DIY. Um, and, and, and so, you see, there's a process. There's a preparation. And, of course, with those Levites, they, wasn't, they didn't turn up. They had to be washed, cleansed. Um, a sacrifice had to be made. They had to be presented to the Lord. Remember, they were presented like a wave offering. And then the blood was put on their ear, thumb, toe, then the anointing oil. See, there's, there's that blood that was shed and that anointing from the Holy Spirit that we need. Why? Thought life, work life, walk life. Everything covered by the blood and by the Holy Spirit. Preparation. Preparation. I wonder your preparation. Have you resisted? Because sometimes we think, Lord, well, nothing's happening. What is happening? The process is difficult. Oh, Lord, you're not answering prayer. And I was just reading Selwyn News this week, and I do love Selwyn News. I haven't read much of him over the years, but so good insights in lots of things. He said, so often we get worried about unanswered prayer. He said, let me tell you, when prayer's answered, um, not the way we want. I don't believe in unanswered prayer because God is just saying no sometimes, and we don't like it. Um, but the, when God answers prayer, <coughs> when we're asking for something, but God says, uh, that's, that's okay, David, let me show you this. Habakkuk was asking for revival. Lord, when are you going to listen? When are you going to do something? And the Lord said, I am not, I'm not slow. I'm doing something. Let me give you an answer to your prayer. This is how I'm going to work it. I'm going to send the Babylonians, the Chaldeans down to actually wipe people out and shake this nation to its core. And Habakkuk said, what? That's not the answer I wanted. I didn't want that answer. That's not what I, I, I wanted to just bring revival. I wanted to do it my way. See, and God is saying, look, you pray. I'll, I'll worry about how to answer the prayer. You just get ready. You just position yourself for God's blessing. Get in that place. See, we can move out of the way where God is working, where God is speaking to us. It is no coincidence that the, the, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting was where? Right in the middle of the people. That was where it was placed, and then the tribes were built all around it. And if you remember Chuck Mislight, you'll remember from a, a, a bird's eye view, it was the shape of the cross. 
you work out the numbers, work out the, you know, the proportion, and it was the, the, the tent of the meeting was in the middle, and the, the uh, tribes around it, three, 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 were in the shape of a cross. Ah, God knows what he's doing, isn't he? He's always speaking to the Lord, isn't he? If we are open our eyes. Right in the middle, and this is what God says, this is where I will meet with you. This is where I will speak to you. See, when God is right in the middle, when the presence of God is right at the heart, when the house of God, the people of God are our heart, then we know, God, we're in the right place. We're in the right place. Of course, um, again, what we've done, we've taken a particular, um, half, let's call it a half-truth, and we've built a lot of, we, we've said, said to people, and it's not untrue, uh, coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. Well, that's true. But of course, we, we've extrapolated from that now that doesn't mean, that means I don't have to come and be a part of the body, be in church. That is a downright lie. In fact, I would say, it, as, as David said, I want, I love to, one thing I desire, one thing I ask, be in the house of the Lord. I rejoice when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Your love for the Lord is determined and directly proportioned to your love for the house and the people of God. Let me say that again. Maybe people can argue, but let me say right down the camera as well. If you're not in the house of the Lord, why not? Because you're not in the position where God wants you to be. To be functioning, to be fruitful, to, to be what you must be with the Lord. You've got to be with the people of God. Because God's designed it like that. And your, your love for the house, David, that's why God said, David is a man after my own heart. Look at David's life. Love, love, love the house of God. Love the praise of God. Love the prayer of God. And what a, what a great guy he was. Didn't hold on to bitterness, did he? Didn't hold on to things in his life. Remember when Saul got killed? 2 Samuel 1. Who was the first to lament? Who was the first to mourn over Saul? Remember who Saul was? Saul had tried to kill him numerous times. And, and that's why he was, a, a, he was a, a running away and running to here and running there. Because he was on the run. Because Saul, had, his mission in life, he was, he'd gone off his head, didn't he? I am going to kill David. Yet, who was the first one to mourn? Oh, Saul. Oh, Saul. David. That's why God loved him. Man after my own heart. He loved the place where God dwelt. So, where God's presence right in the middle. Getting back to where God spoke this. I love, the Bible says Jacob returned and uh, God said, you need to go back to where I spoke to you. Good to go back to where God speak, spoke to us. Good, back to, good uh, to go back to where he promised us. Good to go back where he challenged us. Good to go back to those places. The Bible says Isaac redug the wells of Abraham. He redug those wells. And until he redug those wells, he could not move on and dig fresh wells. And when he redug the wells and he reestablished the foundation, reestablished the call of God, the touch of God, then new revelation came. And if you can read it in uh, Genesis 26, 26, that's right, 26, 18, you'll find that when he's redug the wells, God comes and says, let me just give you the word of the Lord again. Isaac, the promise I give to Abraham, I give to you. And the Bible says he began to dig other wells, get fresh revelation. See, positioning ourselves in, in God's word, in his presence, in the house of the Lord. Why? Because God, that's why God is designed to speak and to place us and proximity. Love that. That's a nice word, proximity. Isn't it? Being close to the Lord. See, if we drift from the Lord, what happens? Peter, the Bible says, followed afar off. What happened? We know the story. He denied the Lord. Why? Because he followed at a distance. The Bible says of the disciples, they were at the crucifixion, and we can only find one that was pretty close, and then it seems he, he and, and the women drifted off, but the rest of the disciples stood at a distance. What happened to them? Jesus finds them in a house, dejected, depressed, discouraged, with doubt, flooding their hearts and minds. Why? Because they stayed at a distance. The Bible says, walk, walk with me. Walk with me. 
be led of the Spirit. Go hand in hand with me. I love those words, isn't it? Uh, we, write, we see right at the beginning of time, Genesis, again, our foundation. Enoch walked with God, bless the Lord, and he pleased the Lord, and he walked with God. And of course, we said it before, and he was no more, because God said, come on home, Enoch. Why? Because he was walking hand in hand with the Lord, walking closely with the Lord. Position, where's our proximity this morning to the Lord? How close are we walking to the Lord? How, how, do we listen to him? Isn't it amazing how many decisions we make, how many things in life we go through, and we don't consult him? See, that just tells us our closeness to the Lord. We, we generally come to the Lord and ask him for things when we need them, or there's a desperation, or when we've, we've tried other avenues, and uh, we come to him. Lastly, instead of he's our first port of call, he's in the center, tend to the meeting. Right in the center, his presence. God said this, build an altar. Build an altar, not idols. Build an altar, not idols, because idols are fashioned in our own making. Now, we say, when you build an altar, we talked about the altars a couple of years ago. Be careful. Don't make it elaborate. Don't make it out of fashion stone. He said, just build it of earth, because it isn't about the altar, and it isn't about necessarily you, it's about me. It's about that place where you come into, into relationship, in communion, in worship, in sacrifice, in, in just honoring me, in realizing my your need of me. And he says, where I am honored, where I am remembered, where I am remembered, I will come and bless. Exodus 20. Where I am honored, where my name is remembered, I will come and I will bless. Bless the Lord. And there's sanctification there, isn't it? And there's sacrifice. Interesting, when Jacob went to Bethel, what did he say in Genesis 35? Someone says the first revival. He said, right, we go to Bethel, house of God. Right, get rid of all your idols. Get, chuck every, all your elaborate stuff you got on, ladies. Throw it away. We're going before the Lord, uh, in a sense, in, in just open, honest. Uh, in, in one sense, all the makeup, and I won't say Nothing wrong with makeup, something. Uh, but just open and honest, isn't it? That's what he was looking for. Just open and honest before the Lord. See, the altar is about coming before the Lord with openness and honest. And that's why he said, don't make it elaborate. You see, that, that elaborate takes our attention off the Lord to the altar. And sadly, I mean, although, you know, we love to go to some of these wonderful churches, don't we? Um, although, maybe not so, but certainly the Catholic churches, you can go and you're thinking, where on earth do you get the money for all this? And you're thinking... I'm not sure about this. It always grates me a little bit. And you think, wait a minute, you're taking your attention. I, 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 get, and I can understand a little bit they were building it for the glory of God. I can understand it a little bit. But it takes such attention from God himself, the wonder of God, to the things around us, to the gold. and ah, These are temporal things, aren't they? See, that's man taking something and twisting it a little bit, as we love to do. We dilute the worship of God. Uh, because ultimately it's the house of prayer. So position yourself. Position yourself right. Get close to the Lord. Where are you this morning? We love the story of Ruth. And um, it's a great, great story of salvation, what real salvation is. We talked about that before, haven't we? Um, where she says, where you go, where you stay, where you die, there I am. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. A great picture of salvation of dying to me, leaving everything behind and following. It's a great picture. But then we see a, a great picture of her positioning herself uh, for the blessing of God, for the redemption, for the, re, for the restoration that all Naomi had lost. She goes, and of course we know the story, she goes and she, uh, she says to Naomi, look, we can't stay here, we, some of us got to work, you to work, I'll go and work for you. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? You youngsters, listen to that again. If you're listening at home, go out and work for us, older people. You're paying your pensions. And um, off she goes, and she's gleaning, and she's a great worker. She's got a great work ethic. She's not lazy. And she's, she's I, and, and, and again, God, that's God, God desires that. He loves us to have a, a great work ethic. And she's working, and she's, uh, and uh, Boaz comes along, and the Bible says, with, uh, she happened to come along, I'm working Boaz's field. Hey, God, 
I mean, of course, that's a little bit of an understatement, isn't it? Remember, God's in control. God is the writer of history. God, if we put our life in his hands, there's no coincidences. There's no, uh, you know, chance. God's in control. And she, she, she's in this place. And then Boaz says, who's that lady there, Ruth? Oh, she's a great character. And he'd heard the story. Great, wonderful of what she did. And he said, look, just drop stuff behind. Don't bother her and don't tell her off. Just, you know, deliberately give her more. And uh, she comes back home and uh, she's, she's got more than uh, uh, Naomi, Naomi says, what have you done? Where have you been today? It's fantastic. And uh, she says, oh, I've been, oh, she said, God has, God has met me. Remember, my, remember Naomi ran away. Instead of staying put in Bethlehem, the house of bread, she ran away. Because why? Because there was famine. And some, she'd short-circuited in everything. Then she'd lost everything. But in her repentance, God had made up and give her this uh, lovely lady, Ruth. And so they come back and, and he said, right, I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to position yourself so he will become our kinsman redeemer. When he's sleeping, light his feet. And of course, some people have distorted that and perverted that. No, no, no. It is just uh, you, you have to, at someone's feet is saying, look, I'm, I'm in need of you. I, you are my kinsman redeemer. And please, the, the, remember we talked about the hem of the garment? Take the hem of the garment. Remember the wings we talked? Healing in his wings. We talked about that the other day. And um, that's the, the hem of the garment could be called wings as well. And so we get the picture. She positioned herself. Boaz said, whoa, what's happening? He said, you are my kinsman redeemer. Will you do that which you should? He said, well, he said, this is someone close to me, but you are good. God is good. God has seen this. And of course, because she positioned herself in the right place, for the blessing of God, what happened? She became David's great grandmother and in the lineage of Jesus. Why? Because she listened and she positioned herself in the right place. That's a wonderful thing to get ourselves in the right place, positioning ourselves. This is what um, uh, Jeremiah said At the crossroads, look for the ancient paths. Ask where is the good way and walk in it. But you said, I will not. I sent you watchmen, I sent you this, and you said, I will not. It comes back again always, doesn't it? To the, the will, the will. Positioning ourselves. So we have on the day of Pentecost last week, we have People positioning themselves at the right time, in the right place, with the right attitude to receive of the Lord. We want that? Yes. We get in the right time. When the, the Pentecost had fully come, they were in the right place. God has said, you wait there, you stop, and you wait, you tarry, and you abide in me. And they went with the right posture and the right and the attitude. Why? Because the Bible said they were worshiping. They were praying. They were just waiting on the Lord. And as we said before, um, only 120 were left out of the 500 that actually uh, saw the resurrection. And uh, for you mathematicians, that's just under 25%, which is quite interesting because when you look at the soul parable, 25% actually become really fruitful, really break out in fruit. And so we have those people who, who stayed and waited and were in the right mind. The Bible says <clears throat> they were one accord. Why? What was the one accord? Jesus. See, that's the wonderful thing about a gospel is so often, again, we take our eyes. If we take our eyes off the Lord, we can see much difficulty, can't we? Glory be. We can see it. I can see much difficulty in many of us. <laughs> that's why he said, keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me. Position yourself. And then you we will see your progression, your perseverance, pressing through. It's a lovely, they used to say a statement years ago, practice his presence. And again, if we go back to David, we see David, uh, again, a man after his own heart, and we see a great example of David. Remember David, not saved like us, not baptized in the Holy Spirit like us, but a man after God's own heart. A man who loved to be in the presence of God. A man with a heart to worship. A heart to praise. A heart to pray. 
the man who was uh, the great intercessor as well. Remember that right at the end uh, where he says, let's count my, my people. Let's count my people. And even Joab, who was a real snake himself, said, no, no, you don't need to do that. That's not a good idea. He said, look, you do as you're told. Bit of pride there from David. Um, and you will number my people. I want to see how great I am. That was the bottom line, wasn't it? And the Bible says, the Lord sent uh, the, the seer, the prophet God. What are you doing, David? What are you doing? You're filled with pride. Here's your options. Three years, three months, three days. He said, let me have the Lord's hand because he's more merciful than men. And uh, the Lord went right through. And uh, the Lord's heart was moved in his, and uh, they saw the, 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 the death angel there with his sword drawn at, at, the, um, at the wine press of Arona. And, and, and David said, Lord, don't kill them. I am not the one at fault. Kill me and my family. Put it on to me. That's the heart of intercessors. Putting yourself in that place. Abram said, Lord, please, if they're just 10, position ourselves in the house of God, in the heart of God, in the presence of God, to be a blessing for God. Everything we have, uh, just position under him. And they were there in the upper room, and God moved suddenly. Why? Because they positioned themselves. They listened to what the Lord had said. Stop and wait, tarry, until you are endued with power from on high. Whatever we need from the Lord this morning, we need to position ourselves. Get that which is ready. Elisha said, what do you have? What do you have in the house? So I got a bit of oil in a, in a flask. Right. Get as many vessels as you can, because this is going to be filled. See, if she... The, the, or if, if she got as many, more vessels, it would be more full. If she just got a, I wonder if she thought, well, I don't, what do you mean? Oh, I just asked her, oh, I don't really want to ask anybody about this. Can, can you lend me a couple of vessels? Couple, all right. And we filled them up. No, get as many as you can. Prepare. Elisha again. They called him in. We haven't got any water. And he said, good job, Joshua fats you, because if Joshua had win, I wouldn't even come. He said, but now Joshua fats you, what do you want? He said, we need water. And uh, he said, right, get the, get the, uh, let's have a time of worship here. Get the musician in. Power of music. And uh, he begins to prophesy. He said, you know what? God is good. Even though you are not, especially the king of Israel. He said, God's going to give you water. But in giving you water, he's going to destroy more, the Moabites as well. Because God is good. He said, but first you have to dig the ditches. See, there's a position, a preparation, a process to go through for God to get us to that place. And if we miss it, if we, if we take our foot off the accelerator, if you like, if we say, well, Dave, yeah, it is a bit more difficult. I, I, ca I can't do this. I can't do that. You know what? We'll miss the progression. We'll miss perseverance. Press through. Dave, yes, been praying long. Keep praying. Dave, I always want, it is difficult to do that. Girl, do it as much as you can. Get up and pr force yourself. Press yourself. Press yourself. What did he say? The snail, by perseverance, made it to the ark. I like that quote. The snail, by perseverance, made it to the ark. He could have said, well, this is a long way, isn't it? It's a long way to the ark. And oh, ooh, 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 oh, Noah, I've never seen rain. Never seen flood. Not a chance. Not a chance. Pressed in. Persevered. Bless the Lord this morning. Where are we? Where are we? Thankfully, the Bible tells us in every area, every issue, to bring it before the Lord. In our time, what does he say? Teach me to number my days aright. Give me a heart of wisdom. Look into the eternal, not the temporal. Don't look in time. Don't invest in this life. In time, invest in eternity. Make sure everything you have is going to be eternal of value. Don't work for this life. That's why he said to Mary and Martha, Mary had positioned herself in the right place at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. Remember, Martha was the one who invited Jesus. Martha was the one who invited Jesus. And she was a girl, a bit uppity, wouldn't she? She was doing the work for the Lord. There's no doubt about that. 
but she'd missed the most important, being in the position to receive from the Lord. Because it doesn't matter how much work we do for the Lord, if we're not receiving from him, it really is just our efforts, isn't it? Now we've got to be careful with that. Position ourselves in the right place. Oh, Father, help us. With our time, with our talents, remember, faithfully ministering, good and faithful servants, with our, our money, our tithes, our everything. Well, of course, Malachi says, oh, test me. Test me. Position yourself. Bring in the tithe. And let me see. You, I will pour out that which you cannot contain. You won't be containing it. If you do what I say, you position yourself. Of course, the New Testament, what is it? Give. It shall be given to you. How much? Pressed down, shaken together, and running over is what the Lord loves. How? But we position ourselves. Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil. He will free from you. Draw near. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. Position ourselves this morning. Where are we? How close are we? Are we managing in the process? Are we giving up on things? Are we, are we further away? Are we doing less than we did before? Is our time with the Lord less than it was just a while ago? Then we've got to say, where, when God say, where are you? Not where I should be. Not where I should be. Our love for him, our love for his people, our love for the house of the Lord, all those things challenges us. And he says, where are you? Because you know what? When we stand in eternity, I was just, again, reading about giving. And um, this week, I think it was, I think it was UCB. And he was saying about giving. And you know, how, how much um, we regret. And I think he, he, he quoted, um, I'm not sure, someone in, in the war. Um, and he, he'd saved hundreds of Jews. But um, he realized he could have saved more. He said, I could have done more, he said, as he was getting older. I could have done more. And we can say that. Help us not to be like that. Help us to have no regrets when we get him. I could have done more. Could have been more. Could have positioned myself in the better place for the Lord. Hey, let's pray as we break bread this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you this morning. Lord, you love us. And you speak into our hearts. You, you are not ashamed. You are not afraid. Because you, you, you want us. You don't want us to stay where you are. You have great purposes and plans for us. Lord, that's going to be difficult sometimes. The process is going to be hard. Yes. But Lord, you've got a great plan. You want to use us to bring, uh, not just to know you, but to show you. We pray, Lord, this morning. Help us to position ourselves. Lord, if, if there's issues in our life, sin in our life, Father, we would say, challenge it. Chasten us. Change us. We pray as we come around the breaking of bread this morning. Thank you, Father. It's a great, great place to be where we can ask ourselves, where am I? Am I closer to you than I was? Am I resting in you? Am I relying upon you? My Father.